so we start off with the amazing and tedious piano music from the first time that June and Luke hook up. And I knew what was happening before the screen went to the actual oh. scene. I will never forget that music. I feel like it's the perfect sex music. The fir- the perfect mm-hmm. sex music when you're first with somebody and you're figuring mm-hmm. them out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could see that. I it was, was not as quick as you. I definitely didn't even put that connection together. Certainly not before yep. Luke's face, face popped up. Oh, you're good. Mm-hmm. The, the breathing was what did it for me. Not so much the music, but like that. Like It was a very like expectant sort of breathing is yeah. the best way to put it. Um, so my first thought was great this is janine i was like this is janine like getting like actually like getting raped he's taking or crazy steven's taking it to another level and then like the gentle music started to kick in and i was like oh i was like this is nice this is pleasant where are we going with this i don't understand um so definitely didn't pick up on it the way that you did scarlet yeah Yeah. Uh, well i mean in reality it's just june listening to janine and slimy steven yeah i I feel like it's been a while since we've seen her have a flashback like this, too. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting placement. And, you know, in regards to the gunfire and bombs, June seems to be the only person that's really concerned here. Yeah. Um, And I understand their concern about her leaving to go check things out, but also shouldn't someone scope out what's going wrong? I mean, we can't right? just continue to look in the corner, like... Bombs are dropping. Let's find out what we need to do here. It seems right. pertinent, right? right? Bombs are dropping and windows are being shot out. Yeah. Like, we, it is abundantly clear that we are within a war zone. And it's both simultaneously, like, it, it, I've got a lot of feelings about the, like this first 30 seconds. Like, I love that, like, June's flashback to, like, her first tryst in the hotel with Luke is, um, is interlaced with this woman where she like she, the, there's this harsh cut where she's just staring up like there's no soft transition like we usually get with all right like we have seen in the past um and then we hear these like the sex noise is continuing we know it's janine and uh, slimy steven mm-hmm. my first thought was okay great now janine's it is janine getting raped this is great but no she seems to be like kind of somewhat enjoying it so great now we have like you don't like stockholm syndrome what is right like you have a predilection against stockholm syndrome if memory serves. So it's not actually in the diagnostic manual mm-hmm. for psychological right. conditions. So it, it's not a it's not a real diagnosis. Right. It's, it's a more mechanism. of a concept that that came from that um, that robbery mm-hmm. scenario that happened in yeah. Stockholm. And they were mm-hmm. calling the people who were um, feeling like they had a connection with the people who were holding them hostage. Um, mm-hmm. By insinuating that they somehow ha- were, there was something wrong with them, psychologically wrong with them, for looking at their captors mm-hmm. as actual people and developing mm-hmm. a kinship with them. That's what they did to survive. But also, some of the people coming out of the situation were just like, I don't really, f-. they they felt like they were um, being looked looked upon as though they were crazy or there was something wrong with them simply because they had a different perspective than others in this situation. Yeah. It's way deeper sense. than that and way more complicated than that. I, and I believe yeah. cuz you you alerted me to the podcast um about this. And so Yeah, LA Not So Confidential did yes, a really really you. great yeah. um episode on this. And I it's been a while since I revisited it, but I believe that they were saying it's also something that I don't know if it was in that specific Stockholm case or mm-hmm. just in general moving forward thing. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something they apply to women. Like, like you mm-hmm. couldn't be, you obviously aren't in your right mind and couldn't possibly be thinking your own thoughts. Therefore, yeah. you must have been brainwashed and coerced in some way that yeah, your little woman brain just couldn't handle. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you for, uh, thank you for going, uh, going down that. Now, for the sake of being succinct, I am still going to refer to it yeah. as... Stockholm syndrome because it's oh yeah it still works as a concept uh, yeah and when you're yeah. applying it to this I don't know what yeah. else the real term would be for this uh mm-hmm. interpersonal like play in an abusive relationship you know mm-hmm. right yeah but in this specific example we understand that it's not an actual like medical diagnosis however for the sake of brevity I'm going yeah. to refer to it as such yes all right cool so um it was one of those like 
is Janine actually enjoying this? Is this a, is this symptomatic of Stockholm uh, of some of uh, some sort of Stockholm syndrome coping yeah. mechanism? Um, so like that was like immediately I was like, this is much more complex. Um, and then like June looks over at like this other person who is actively awake. And was he reading a book? Or was he like flipping through something? I don't know what he was doing, but he like looks at her and like smiles. Yeah. And I do I know that she took it at, like, she smiled back politely just to be like, yep, this is awkward. Great. Um, I took it, that smile that he had as like a, hey, we're hanging, like, almost laughing about the situation of like, hey, we're hanging out in this, like, in this community room. They're f- there's bombs outside. We're both awake. <laughs> what is our life? I sort of appreciated that, that brief moment of levity. Yeah, but yeah. then at, at the end of the day, like, no one's paying attention. There's car alarms going off. There's windows being shot out. And no one seems panicked. Does that ring to you, too, as similar to in Gilead? Like, how Aunt Lydia had said multiple times that you'll get used to your circumstances. Mm-hmm. Like, it might be jarring to you now, but eventually you'll get used to uh, the way that things are. That everyone here seems to just be used to this. Even Janine is not affected by it it seems very bizarre yeah i think i don't know i just think that june is the type of person that simply can't rest Mm -hmm. i it seems like a lot of the people around her even going back to the farmhouse they seem to just have an easier time of compartmentalizing and being like okay for right now we don't have to be on high alert Obviously, I feel like this is a situation where they should be on high alert. I mean, I would be. Bombs are dropping. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, that they don't have to be on high alert all the time. And June just doesn't seem like she's that type of person that can do that. Like, I think she feels like she has the weight of actual world on her shoulders. Mm-hmm. I think I, I do get it, too, because I do feel like that in my own life circumstances. And I actually have to remind myself to calm the fuck down you Mm -hmm. don't have to be go 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 high alert high anxiety all the time way easier said than done yeah but i think that's just where june is at like personality wise like this is this is how she is now she can't put her head down because she has way too much to be concerned about and if people around her aren't as concerned as she is she that you know she doesn't understand why yeah Mm -hmm. it's because she has at this point accepted this leadership role and lives and operates in it and as a second nature and mm-hmm. she can't relinquish it that's mm-hmm. what her issue is here she doesn't janine has no problem because janine is used to being the follower she's used to being told this is what you're going to do we'll keep you safe just go over here and mm-hmm. she's okay within that position at least so far that we've seen and Mm -hmm. june was forced into a leadership role she was forced to then have to make sure that her people were going to be safe she doesn't have a great track record at now right now and that's already weighing on her and she just can't trust steven she can't she can't trust any leader any person who especially one that doesn't want to give her the time of day and let her know Mm -hmm. what they're thinking and bring her to the table and give her a seat at the table which is the thing that comes up a lot and it's definitely the running thread through this episode is Mm -hmm. this lack of this leadership being taken away this power this control being taken away from people that are used to operating and benefiting and you know it's different for each person but with Mm -hmm. june here i think that's why she can't rest because she doesn't trust that steven or anyone else is going to say that it's okay until june sees for herself that it's okay she needs a plan she wants to make the choices she wants jenny Janine to just come with her and not question anything about her choices but she can't give that blind faith to Stephen the same way that Janine has given it to June Mm -hmm. or to Stephen. Something that um, to that leadership uh, role um, everyone I mean it's it's abundantly clear that Stephen is the uh, is the de facto leader of this uh, this weird fringe rebel group Um, when Stephen yelled it's not safe get back in bed that ring less to me of, I mean, and obviously I'm like not keen on this guy already, but mm-hmm. that rang less to me of someone who is a true leader saying, hey, it's not safe right now. Hunker down. We'll figure it out. And more of like a controlling relationship sort of uh, sort of vibe. Like it felt like a very, it felt less of a leader sentiment and more of a manipulative sentiment. Does that make sense? 
I think so. I just didn't read it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think I see where you're coming from. I just feel like he's more... I feel like he looks at June the same way that June would look at someone else who just showed up and now she has to care for and be responsible for Mm -hmm. of like, it's kind of the way she treated Esther a little bit. Like the, we had talked about that of like June is the leader. She's trying to make these choices. She has so many things on her plate and sometimes she just can't give the time of day to all these people that just need to do what she knows is the right Mm -hmm. thing to do. I feel like that's what Steven feels like in this situation. He, we're going to see later in this episode, he does want to keep his people safe and alive. And he thinks that June is a reckless because she is that he's already picking up on the type of leader that June is and it's just different than him he has a different motivation a different goal a different Mm -hmm. um, style so all of those things are going to play in and I just don't think it's something that June wants Mm -hmm. to stick around for which is why she leaves that makes sense Um, I appreciate that shift in perspective because the way that I read that was like like the whole get back in bed rang to me of like of, of an abuser and it might have just been because like he and Janine were just uh, were just having sex yeah. and we know that the start of this relationship was that she was in a forced position and had no other recourse and she like was util- uh, utilizing she allowed her she allowed herself to steal herself because she's been in that situation before mm-hmm. yeah. um, but it just felt so unsavory when he said it mm-hmm. so yeah. so thank yeah. you for, thank you for that uh, that little shift yeah, I think that he that specific line, I think um, within the context of what I was saying, that was him being exasperated with her for getting out, especially while he's in the middle of something like he doesn't really need to be <laughs> dealing with June wandering around right now while bombs are going off like, hey, dummy, lay in bed. Everything's fine. I'm trying to get laid. I also don't think that he is the same kind of abuser that you're seeing him as um, based on that scene with Janine. I think he's more of a opportunistic abuser like that was just him being like well this is my power and you have nothing so uh, this is a way for me to find a use for you Mm -hmm. and that's why he didn't like june and he didn't want he told june she could leave because he didn't want to feel like he was forcing her that was that comment and so i don't think Mm -hmm. he is an abuser of his power as much in the grand scheme of things as he is within what these women who showed up with nothing could do for him in that moment. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I don't think he's a predator. I don't think he seeks out pe- women in which he can take under his wing to therefore use in his ways. I think he no, yeah. is mostly just annoyed that June showed up and is annoying. <laughs> I think too, Fair it's, enough. um, and I, and I feel like we get this in the next scene Um, when June starts asking questions about how does one go about trading here. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling that, like, by this point, June is just all set with men. You know, she doesn't want to deal with this dude that's, like, looking at her like, hey, what's up, you know, when the bombs are dropping and they're all, Mm -hmm. like, laying down. She just can't be bothered. She does not like slimy Steven. Completely Mm -hmm. understandable. I don't like Slimy Steven either. Then to find out when she's questioning Teresa in the next scene that if she wants to go um, participate in this trading process, which, first of all, it's Echoes of Season 3 when she was trying to get in on the Martha network. Mm -hmm. And the other Marthas were just like, no, thank you. (laughs) Um, She's just disgusted. Like, even here, she has to check in with a guy to get permission Mm -hmm. To do something, and she's mm-hmm. over it. Like That's she's annoying. over having mm-hmm. to take cues from the menfolk. We'll say this though: as much as I hate Slimy Steven, and as much as I don't like his sentiment of the way that he said it's not safe, get back in bed, because it's not safe there either. There is glass that's being shattered. It's not safe anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. June, when she like was going up the stairs and then approached that window, and then put the lantern in the window maybe slimy steven was onto something because june (laughs) it's not safe to be walking around and putting a lantern in the window of the dilapidated mill (laughs) turned outpost what are you doing you're a logistical tactical nightmare right now yep No, she really was. That was actually driving me crazy. And that's something that we see, like, through the rest of, you know, the episode is how she doesn't necessarily know what she's doing outside of her little sphere that she was operating Mm -hmm. with before. And 
You know, it's a, she definitely comes off as a liability. Mm-hmm. Her instincts are strong, but her, her lack of forethought, even like within a minute is, uh, is exactly like you said, makes her a liability. Yeah. Like, girl, just get your light out of the window. I understand wanting to watch that gunfire and wanting to watch that, or wanting to watch that military exchange because that's fascinating. And that's the sort of thing that we are, as, as Americans, we are very fortunate in that we are used to only seeing that on our TV screens. That's funny that you mentioned that. That's exactly what I was thinking, though, because it, that's, that's what, what it thinking. felt like to me, because they've been talking. This isn't like news to any of us watching mm-hmm. this show that there's a war happening in Chicago. And Janine has said it many times in the last episode, like, wait, why are we going to the front of a war? And mm-hmm. there is something different about hearing it and thinking about it versus actually seeing where they are. And it's, mm-hmm. it was very jarring. And especially like watching the mortar it's night and you see those shining like lights of mortar flying from both directions it rang so similarly to we're of a certain age do you two remember like in like the early two th- early 2000s um in like aleppo and in jordan in iran and iraq like watching these night bombings happening yeah. that the united states mm-hmm perpetrated yeah for sure yeah. I remember those, and watching yeah. those green like mm-hmm. rocket launch mm-hmm. lights that's so much what yeah. it looked like i'm even more of an age than you are because the reason why this reminded me of something that i would see on tv is because in sixth grade when we went to war with iraq and the gulf yes! war i remember sitting on the floor of my parents bedroom mm-hmm. and their little like 12 inch tv watching the imagery of like you know whatever they were these green missiles and bombs and whatever yes. just flying across the sky I remember so that. that's what i thought of when i saw those in the um, distance as she was mm-hmm. looking outside it took me right back to that experience and that was the first time i think a lot of us had seen anything like that mm-hmm. it was there was something very significant about witnessing that on tv oh yeah Absolutely. for sure mm-hmm. remember that distinctly and um and having june get to see that and witness that in person um when as an american even though that's understood like exactly like you said marjorie um we've had years of prep mental preparation for this we know that chicago is a war scene we know that this is like that this is a contested front but to have her actually see it and for us to actually see it um and experience it makes it real yeah. But also, god damn it, get the light out of the window, June. <laughs> Please? <laughs> Please. I feel like even as people that have no um no experience in war zones, we would at least have the wherewithal to move the light from the window while you're observing this as a protective measure. I, but who- I don't need to be in a war zone. I grew up in an apartment building. If there's a light on inside, <laughs> they can see you if you can see out. <laughs> like Yeah, that's a great. And we point. were <laughs> Nosy little kids who like to look out the windows. 